welcome back to the channel um i hope you guys enjoy that beams video that is a mad video um i said off camera <laughs> that was the loudest car that i've ever heard and ever featured but today might change uh, i think today is that day again these yo, a 13 second box center 10th quickest in the land all missing like by that nissan body and nissan power plant and na so yeah and then a daily cape town stock screamer in a screamer so i mean and it's one owner um so if that doesn't keep you to watch this whole video then i don't know what i must do <laughs> so guys please like uh, like really helps the video um youtube pushes the video even more when you like it so like comment subscribe and let's go guys like i said 2021 I'm gonna try and pump out cool, cool content for you guys, so peace. Connit, where are you? We're waiting here for you, you need to hurry up, you're always late. Come now. Yes, Daddy, I'm on my way. I'm now there. You'll hear me come. I'm now there. today one is a one is a daily one is a kind of a daily race car daily yeah, race yeah. car so welcome to the channel Connie yeah. um, straight into it you're not gonna waste time two VVLs owned by one guy so there must be a love for VVL on Nissan actually so spoil the beans so basically um, yeah my love for Nissan started as a young man on high school <laughs> as to we be honest <laughs> um, uh, a lot of guys know him in the Nissan scene, uh, Riyad Daniels, yeah. also known as Yata. Yata yes. So we basically stay in the same area. Um, at that time, he obviously um, he drove Nissan at that time. Mm. He used to take me and his sister to school. And at that time, he had a Nissan STI. I mean, I was in high school. I think I was probably grade 10 or 11. <laughs> he drove that time already, uh, SR20. Yeah. And then, yeah, he used to fetch me every day for school. And every time I got into that car, when that man put down, just as excitement. <laughs> excitement, it's butterflies. It's, and I, from that time, I really thought, nah, your Nissan is this is what something you want. else. Yeah. And obviously, as, as going on through life and, and moving, moving up, yeah, going, yeah. growing up. Um, that was always an aim for me to get a, 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 a Nissan, specifically a STI or GHI. And VVL specifically? Not really VVL, I was, I was okay with just SR20 because okay, okay, okay. at that time VVL wasn't really so popular. Mm -hmm. man. But then, um, yeah, I eventually, I eventually got the Sentra, let's say, I think it was 2015. Okay. Yeah, I got the uh, after school basically when I just started <laughs> working, I was saving, saving, and uh, I got uh. my first Sentra. And then that's where it all started. Also, obviously, him helping me. A big inspiration as well. Big inspiration. Yeah. yeah, he basically does everything on all my mm. Nissan that I have. And then, yeah, ever since I've, I've, I've been with Nissan, um, there was a time I'm, I tried changing brands. I went to BMW. It didn't quite work out mm. for me because all the time when I was driving BMW, I was just still checking you. I still must love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this then, is life, man. yeah, and <laughs> then I sold life. the BMW and decided, you, you know what, this is my time, I'm gonna go back mm. now and do what, what I enjoy. Yeah. So, yeah, that's basically it. That's the story of how I came on this. So, there's a, there's actually a, a history of this, there's inspiration, of, yeah. and big shout out to Mr. Riyad, Riyadh's works there. So, um, I'm excited. We, you, you, you guys have seen a little clip or heard it. Um, 
This is too loud, guys. Loud, loud, loud. We'll get to that one, but let's move on. Get to. I always, I'm always very excited for this part because <laughs> it is the fun stuff. Um, mods on the car, like motor-wise and aesthetic-wise. Um, get into that, please. Um. So basically, this is your 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 normal Cape Town stock. <laughs> the infamous Cape Town stock. <laughs> yeah, Cape Town stock. So we're talking Cape Town stock. Um, the car basically has its normal breathing mods. Mm. Um. So we're car running uh, VVL engine, obviously. Yes. Stock motor though. Um. There is in one cams in. Mm. It's not OEM, it's a, a set of bullets, uh, oh, okay. bullet spec, yep. yeah, in one uh, cams. And then we're running uh, branch and exhaust, and then obviously with a dictator standard mm. management system. Um, so, yeah, and then a cold air induction, you know, the mm. VVL guys like to stack, stack out. I'm one be. of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> we play essential. the melody of our people, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's about basically, and the car is mm. tuned by Zaire of the line okay, performance. Zaire, yes. Um, so yeah, that's all. That's basically it. And that's all you need. That's, yeah, all that's all you all need. You need um, that's all you need for these. Like motors. I said, this car I don't. I don't race for this car. Mm. Now and then maybe if I get some. A but, robot, a robot, something. Yeah, yeah. but I don't. Uh, I don't go out racing with mm. this car, obviously. Um, exterior mods. The only thing that I I try to keep the car away in plus. Mm. Only thing that's fitted is a robust total and slide oh, okay. sunroof. Yeah, it was actually fitted by a beat Sally. Oh, Everyone yes, yes, knows yes, yes, it's yes, quite yes. popular on the scene. Yes. Interior mods are actually, I have probably like two mods here, as you can see, it's the, the Momo Deep mm. Dish um, quick steering release. wheel. No, it's not oh, quick okay. release, it's a normal. And then I don't know if you call this a mod, but there's an oil pressure gauge. Actually a must have on a VVL, because yeah, so these cars are very fun for having oil so pressure. So more than a, more a must and not a mod we can call Yeah, it. basically, it's your normal um, standard procedure when driving VVL. Um, suspension wise, I have the poly mounts right through. Mm. I have the short shift the kit fitted on, on the, the gear selector um, lever, obviously, short yes. shift the kit, along with the, with the polyed bushes. I have polyed bushes in the rear, the rear arms, and then um, adjustable coilovers, yeah. I think it's um, a Nevo, a Ned Nevo. Ned Nevo, or, yes, Ned Nevo. Uh, yeah. I think it's that, um, that's the coilover that's yeah. currently on the car. Um, I am going to change it. PCs uh, maybe? Yeah, <laughs> no, PCs definitely. <laughs> But yeah, other than that, that is about it. There's no other, no other mods secret so, spice or yeah, stuff you don't want to talk very about. Very basic Cape Town uh, stuff. Yeah, this is yeah, that's your Cape the Town definition stuff. of a Cape Town VVL. But Infamous bracket that uh, Cape Town stock VVLs uh, yeah, with yeah. power figures they in that bracket. I'm not gonna say it, maybe you're gonna say it. Um, what power are you pushing with this uh, inner scream as you call um, it? Last about a few months ago, I'd say two three months ago, mm -hmm. the car made 171 at Zaire sure. and around I think 248 newtons, if sure, I'm not mistaken. Nice. Yeah. Obviously, I don't know if that is still the power mm. figures. Obviously, sometimes the power figures yes, do go yes, up definitely. or down. I actually want to take the car team soon for a power run and maybe for a retune when summer's coming. Mm. Obviously, the car was tuned in the hot of winter that time. Oh, okay, so for the hot weather, maybe yeah, take maybe some out or whatever. Compensation, yeah. But yeah. like I said, the score is not really tuned for, for power. So daily use. Daily use, yeah. So that's about it, yeah. I don't have really future plans with, with, with engine, regarding engine or anything. Mm. But like I said, I'm going to fit BC coilovers, um, obviously because it gives a nice drive. Yeah, that's, and that's all the daily aspect of yeah, it, to the enjoy daily, it a bit And then that's about it, yeah, I prefer keeping the car the way it is. <laughs> I actually posted this car for sale. Yes, that's I actually saw. how we oh, that's a, Yeah, that's how we... Yeah, <laughs> and then we went to go and view other cars and the amount of people that, that's selling the cars and the amount of money they're asking for mm. the cars. It's, it's not, it wasn't worth it for yeah. me, so I decided not, I'm going to keep the car. And then I fitted the sunroof and I'm actually going to keep the car for myself now. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, if you let go of this, it's going to be hard to, to yeah, get it back even. So I maybe. always wanted this specific color and I spoke to my father and I told him, now that I have this color, um, it was always a, a on the bucket list for me because mm -hmm. I, had, I had many other STIs and GXIs before, but I couldn't find this color. Now that I have it, um, I want to 
uh, at that time obviously yes. I posted for so it's silly of me I thought <laughs> nah I'm, I'm gonna keep like the car the moment thing maybe yeah there. because even when I drive this car around whatever people always tell me oh this car's color you yeah. don't see it a lot it's not your normal white or your normal yeah. it's color. not grayish even it's a it's a in between the gray yeah they and call the it La Scala Silver sure that's the name of the car yeah. the, the silver of the car yeah. very nice and I mean the attention you get people can say slap the dude when they hear the stick stuff like that so it is, it's everywhere you go <laughs> So but definitely. yeah, I definitely enjoy the score. I enjoy it more than what I should at times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's about it. So basically the history behind this car, behind me here, uh, um, at that time, like I told you, I moved from, I moved brands quite a, quite a bit, I had the BMW for the two of these cars, uh, uh, E90, 335, and while I was owning that car, that car was, oh, that car was a nice car, that car was basically everything I wanted besides having the adrenaline that you get behind uh, the wheels of these cars. And then um, I wanted a VVL again because I haven't owned it for, for, for quite some time. Um, and then I spoke to my cousin Yata and I told him, okay, I'll smack a, a VVL again, man. And he's like, why don't you build you one? And I thought, okay, uh, I'm keen on building one. And then he said, you can have your race car also because you know that, that is the purpose when you're having a VVL, is to go fast or to go out racing and whatnot. And I told him, okay, I'm gonna think about it. And then one morning I woke up and I thought, nah, I'm just gonna go ahead with this, man. And then I was on Marketplace, I was looking. I always liked the shape of a box shape center. It's this old school looking, Mexican looking car, or Cuban looking <laughs> car, yeah. And then um, watching various videos on YouTube, I see that uh, I think it's the B14, if I'm not mistaken, or yeah, and the. the those centers overseas are actually doing very good times with VVL swaps in Mexico and all those places. So those cars are quite popular there. And then I thought, nah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to, to look for a box shape center. And then believe it or not, I found this car behind me from my auntie in, in, in Pelican Park. Um, it was on, on sale, I think for 3.5, it was 3.5, yeah. It was a driving car, but it blew a head gasket. Obviously it didn't look the way it looked now. The body was quite, um, I would say like it needed work because it was rusted on the roof, it needed a respray. But when I went to go view this car, the main thing was to check obviously underneath the car, no rust, the floor is fine, fire hole is fine. And once I checked all of that out, there wasn't a bit of rust under the car or anywhere in the engine, it was literally just on the roof on the post, which is like most cars that is close to see. This car's from Pelican Park, as I said, yeah. And then I uh, decided now I'm gonna take this car. Obviously, looking at the weight of the car, the weight was also very important to me because I didn't want the car weighing over a thousand kilos and then we have to take weight off and then still having a heavy car. And I saw that this car actually on the disc, it's there 940 kilos, which is not bad. It's not far off from, let's say, a Mark 1 or your Listen X. I wanted to go the X route, but there's quite a few people that already in that boat and then yeah then i bought the car the same day i bought the car we actually started stripping the car we took the motor and box out um and then obviously started stripping the car prepping it for sr20 swap and then basically from there things started flowing this was actually a, a ramadan build i'll tell you it happened during the month of fast yeah that's why we always make a joke and always say yeah this car is doing what it does there's a lot of baraka in the car <laughs> So, um, yeah, like I said, it's everyone's hard work and the goodness out of their heart that the car is where it is now. Um, we had a lot of help with this car. Um, I'll tell you later on who will help. But the uh, main guy is Yata. I probably mentioned him so much in this video, but he's literally, yo, he's a, that's like my big boot. Yo. But yeah, the score, uh, basically from there, we fitted the VVL engine. We did whatever we needed to do. And yeah, that's how the car is, that's how I came on the car.
Okay, so as everyone knows, it's a SR20 V E swap um, currently on the car. Um, believe it or not, this is a SR20 D E V E. So when they say D E V, it's a D E sub assembly. The SR20 D E sub assembly with your VVL head swap like and your yeah, your, they call it the Frankie or Frankenstein. Yeah. So this car is a uh, is actually a big uncle Frankie because it's a complete D E swap uh, D sub assembly. Yeah. So um, yeah, the D sub assembly, uh, no mods done to it, it's a stock SR20 D sub um, with a VVL head swap and then um, only thing we're having is like your Cape Town stop uh, dropping in one cams, uh, also not OEM, I'm not by the means to be buying OEM <laughs> in one cams, this is actually regrinds in this car that has been shimmed up to the head yeah. so it's that and then you call the induction. This car has an aftermarket um, um, intake on, like sort of a, a plenum as they call it, but um, it's an aftermarket one. I think RBT built it. It actually came on the Sabre, and then I obviously and I, I swapped the two around because this is actually for racing. It's going to be senseless. I drive with a, a, a plenum on a, a daily car, yeah. So I put that on, and then obviously also branch and exhaust running on a standard dictator management system um, power figures is at about this car last tuned like two weeks ago at z-line performance well, that's my go-to tuning place um, we made 175 and 260 newtons yeah those were the figures on the car so we're actually quite impressed with this frankie setup because it's not a complete vvl motor it's literally deve so yeah with the cars at we quite happy we're more than happy with the car um, with the figures and, and the way the car is also going now. We are running a, a external um, fuel cell with an external pump. So obviously the car being a carburetor car, we couldn't use the tank and fit the in-tank pump. So we're running a fuel cell and then I think, yeah, that's about it. Everything else is not, we have normal injectors. We have, uh, yeah, everything else is still stuck on the car. Like I said, the purpose of this car being built is for racing, although I tail it from A to B and I use it for work purposes when I need to. Um, we did a MSA event last week at Kelani. Um, we did a personal best of 13.001. Um, we drove before a street to strip event in full term, both times with, uh, we did in full term. Uh, the first time out of the car street to strip, I drove a 13.8 on street tires. Obviously at the MSA event, it was a prep track, so we drove with a full slick, yeah. Then on the full slick, we did a 13.001. We were actually very impressed. On that run, actually, I slipped third. So we could have been in the 12s, but um, the reality is we're not. We are 13.001. Um, but yeah, uh, the clutch was obviously warm and whatnot, so I, the gears were a bit sticky, I, I slipped third, but nonetheless it was a good day on the track, despite having a, a few setbacks. Um, so yeah, we, I actually made it onto the, the all Nissan motor, they call it, there's a list basically with the top 10 all Nissan, specifically all Nissan. When I say all Nissan, um, in a, I mean as in Nissan motors, in Nissan bodies, uh, not, not swapping like Nissan in Golf or like that um, then I made that list yeah so basically the fastest um, all Nissan motor uh, front wheel drive in a specifically in a um, in South Africa um, ending up obviously as a newcomer on, on number 10 with a 13.001 obviously we're working our way forward we actually have immediately after that day because we drove that time in a full term uh, we obviously the next day we started stripping out the car because um, we take, took out the carpets and whatnot, seats, all that things. So yeah, we definitely next event aiming to be in the 12s, definitely for sure, that is the goal. Basically the way forward with this car, like I said, we want to be in the 12s. Um, but obviously like everyone else, the moment you, you, you achieve one goal, you're always setting yourself another goal. So the goal is to be in the 12s, low 12s, um, so obviously we're going to take some weight off the car, which already started doing. Um, we need to sort out some traction issues, fit some traction bars and maybe stiffen up the back some more. Um, I'd like to fit a set of PC coilovers on here as well, because at the moment we're running a stock suspension. If I say stock, this is still 1300 struts in this car. It's, I just have sleeve overs at the back to stiffen it up a small little. Um, yeah, so obviously take off weight. Um, regarding the current motor that's in the car, I'm not going to fiddle by it. Um, 
PVL have tendencies to once you start fitting other pistons and stuff, it's not very reliable. So I have a ICOM uh, sub-assembly that we're busy building. Obviously, once that motor is completely assembled, then we will fit that complete motor in this car to an event, obviously, to push for a lower time. And then once that event is done, just put this motor again back in here. Because like I said, this motor is very reliable. It hasn't thrown us away or anything like that. And yeah, we don't want to basically compromise the reliability of the car at the moment. So we'll rather build, no matter how long it takes, build another sub-assembly and get another head and do what we need to to push for obviously low times but other than that we more than happy with this car yeah so uh, like i said it's a get in and go it's take us a to b and also when we race we race for this car but yeah that's basically about it for future plans regarding this car yeah so i basically like to give a special thanks to and uh, to everyone that has helped me up until this point um, be it with a build or not a build i mean help in general with with um with achieving my, my dreams and goals, I'd say. Um, a very special Shukran thanks go out to uh, Riyad Daniels of Yatas Works and his team. They obviously put a lot of effort into these cars. There were countless late nights and your early mornings driving around. So special thanks to him. If you need any conversions done, uh, race car builds, uh, anything related to, to those type of things, especially Nissan, that man is literally, he's a, oh, he's a genius when it comes by Nissan. Um, you can, you can um, definitely make contact with him. And then I'd like to also thank my team at QNS Automotive. Um, we're up in Mitchell's Plain. We basically do diagnostics and maintenance, servicing on, on um, all the newer type of, of vehicles, uh, specializing in BMW, Mercedes-Benz and Audi and VW. So we do your accessory coding, we do coding on BM specifically. Um, we're very yeah, in-depth when it comes by BMW. Um, so I'd like to thank them, uh, my guys, at is Ziyad, Keenan, and uh, last but not least, my father. He's also my, my biggest inspiration behind everything, always helping me and supporting me. He's actually here with us today. I, t I told him he needs to drive one of the cars. But um, yeah, other thanks I'd like to give to is to Bhutan EP of MA Performance, always helping us. He's also an, a Nissan genius, uh, mad scientist as they would call him. Um, so, shukran to him and then to Z-Line Performance, Zahir, um, for always keeping the score at its peak with, in the records tuning. Um, his, his customer service is the best. Um, I've seen many tuning platforms, but I don't think you'd get customer kickback like you do at Z-Line Performance. You can have issues there, you'd literally help you fix your car and tune your car without even charging you for fixing your car. Um, so yeah, he also obviously gives us special rates with tuning and whatnot because we come there all the time. So uh, a big shout out to him as well. And then uh, to a buddy of mine at Munib Adams at MNR Space. Uh, they break up Nissan's, he does Nissan's, half of these cars parts I got by him. Uh, so yeah, big thanks to him. And then also thanks to Joe's Exhaust and Radiators up in Mitchell's Plain. They do all our welding work and, and, and fabrication and things like that. So literally the car behind me told anything that I need welded was welded by them or made up by them. So you can also hook them up. They also did the car's branch exhaust as well as the, the cross member reinforcement. And then the guy that sprayed my cars, uh, I'd like to say thank you to him also. Uh, he sprayed both, both my cars. Um, he's very good, uh, Shaheen of SAW Panel Works. And then most importantly for all my friends and everybody who helped me uh, uh, with a build and, and took part in, in whatever it is I needed on the cars or help with both of these cars, I'd like to say a big thank you and shukran to them because I mean uh, their efforts also goes a long way. It's, it's, it's people, small efforts that literally helps you and carry you out where you, you need to be, especially in today's lifetime, yeah. So I just, uh, yeah, I'd like to say thank you to everyone and keep doing what you're doing, guys. Um, you saw basically, you saw my number one.